hey there we have like eons of stories to tell so if you want to follow us along on this journey and and keep up with all the stories that we have putting out make sure you hit the subscribe button uh hope you enjoy thank you hey what is up everybody chad is here and today we are starting this story kang only myself left to conquer so uh this story here is basically the origin story of kang because finding his origin before this was a pain and it, basically what this story does is it takes everything that that kang has done or you know the like connects all those points together pretty much right like it'll get you from point a to b for b to c basically just like that right because like it's it's hard trying to uh, like keep up with everything that he's doing considering the fact that we're in the 31st century right and we pick up with this guy nathaniel richards right like he's not he's probably like in his like early early 20s and uh basically he's like lamenting because he doesn't you know he doesn't have anything conquered right like he's just a guy and like so far into the future there's not really much going on right like it's a very stagnant place there's not really much room for progression of the human race it's basically just very boring to him right so like for the last two years he's been looking for a way out of there right like he wants to go to like a more you know a more progressive time right like one that's not just you know reached the pinnacle of humanity and it's just stagnant at that point so he's trying to like find a uh, find a way out and what he does is it seems like he's going to uh dr doom's place like to, to his uh, quarters who's like long dead like dr doom's been dead for a really long time he's going to his quarters and it seems like he's going to look for the time platform right so he's like looking around and one of the doom bots is like standing there right and he's like looking up at it and eventually while he's looking around for stuff uh the doom bot comes online right like it comes online and it basically starts attacking him right and he's like trying to get it to stop uh, but it won't stop and eventually king the conqueror shows up right so king the conqueror shows up he takes this doom bot out and he like throws it to the 20th century right sends it back to you know like back to uh, the time of dr doom basically uh this is where uh, nathaniel is just is, like asking like who are you like like i've never seen you before like who, who is this guy right and kane he's just like dancing around it right like he's like dancing around the question and he's like saying like i'm just somebody you know who knows like infinitely more than you do you know stuff like that right He's like asking him like all these different questions, right? Like, like how that's that's not that doesn't answer my question, right? Like, how do you know my name? You know, stuff like that. And Kane's like, I mean, that's that's another you know obvious question. Right? Like, I, I hope you be asking me you know better stuff, right? Like, you're, you're you're smart. And basically, what Nathaniel says is, I mean, I'm the liberator of of the the, the library of Victor Von Doom, like like the secrets, like the secrets of the history of the world. Like, I, I am the heir to that, right? And and you want better? You want me to ask you better questions? And what Kane says is there is no easier place to lie than in the pages of a book. You'll learn to trust only first-hand sources. So let me ask you, would you rather read history or make it? And what Nathaniel says is, that's all I've ever wanted to do was make history, right? Like, I've been living here. There's not much going on. Like, making history is, is a dream of mine, right? That's why I've been trying to get out of this place. And what Kane says is, good, you're ready. Now ask me your question again. And Nathaniel says, who are you? This is where Kang, he's just like the question with 10,000 answers. The conqueror, the eternal, the god pharaoh Ramatut, the timekeeper Immortus. I have been them all and will be again. But there's only one answer that has ever truly mattered. In the end, I am Kang. And at the beginning, I was you. So this is where he starts like trying to tell Nathaniel of his plan, right? Like he wants to take, he wants to take uh, Nathaniel and basically show him all the different losses and defeats that he suffered, right? So he's like asking him to join him, right, and become king. So he takes him, and Nathaniel's like, okay, let's go. And they go through this time portal, right? And what they where they arrive is 65 million years into the past, right? So what King tells him is, in exactly one year, uh, this is where the asteroid is gonna hit. That's basically gonna like in the cretaceous period right and basically what i'm going to teach you in that time is how to survive right is, he, he's been living in a very peaceful life like 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 soft times make for soft men so he's a very he's not when it comes to survival he doesn't have that instinct right so he starts he's like teaching him how to survive and like along the way he's like going through time and like showing him all these different things that he's done right like when he was uh rama tut like all the the losses that he's taken to the fantastic four the avengers all these different things right and basically um like while he's like doing that Nathaniel sees that he's he's literally just showing him his losses right he doesn't see like a real benefit to any of this right and eventually he catches him like like sitting there crying one time right so what he does is like he's like looking and he's like but as i was forged so did i glimpse the flaws in the iron that made my teacher and basically kang is just like sitting there crying right and what he does is he goes and shows him the death of ravana once he got so drunk he could barely stand and he took me to a far off world where he cried in the shadows as a woman died he said one word then went silent for days ravana 
and that was basically the death of Ravana, right? And Kang, he he perceives this as Nathaniel like seeing him as weak because he showed him like his ultimate failure, you know, him losing the love of his life, you know, stuff like that while he was trying to like protect her. Uh, he's like trying to tell Nathaniel, never love, right? Like you will conquer like multiple universes, right? Like they will bend to your whim. But the only way you will be conquered is by the love that you have for Ravana. That's basically what he's trying to tell him, right? Like never love. So Nathaniel, he's like out one day, right? And basically like he, he comes upon this woman, right? And she's being chased by this T-Rex. And like what he does is he uses his gun and he takes out this T-Rex, basically saving this woman, right? So they end up like, you know, he's like looking up at her, you know, he's like smitten, right? Like he is smitten. He is baffled by, by, by this woman, right? Like he is falling like completely head over heels for this woman already, right? So he approaches her, right? You know, he's saying like, hello, I'm not, I'm no threat, you know, stuff like that. And he's like trying to figure out if she can understand what she's saying, what he's saying, right? And like what she says is, I understand. Nathaniel calls out to Addie and Addie meets Nathaniel, right? So, you know, they, they've made each other's acquaintance. And basically what she does is she takes him back to her tribe, right? She takes him to the tribe and like, she's like bringing him upon the village elder, right? Like the, 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 basically the head of the group, like the leader of the tribe, right? And what he does is like, you know, after seeing his bravery and uh, like taking out the T-Rex the that was like trying to, kill Eddie. Uh, they basically mark him for the the beast that he uh, taken out right like basically saving a life right so they mark him with the just like face paint and basically they have like the celebration right because you know like he's he's basically sort of inducted into the tribe like to some extent right so they're like celebrating right they're just going around dancing you know doing all the different stuff right and, like he's basically learning their culture so eventually he takes off right he takes off and he goes back to Kang, right? He want to tell he wants to tell Kang about this discovery of this tribe, right? Of these people, right? He wants to tell him about this stuff that he just found, right? So Kang, he gets pissed, right? And he's basically telling uh, Nathaniel that he's losing sight of what's going on. Like, he's he's not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be getting close to these people because if you get close to these people, you're gonna try to change something throughout time, and that's not supposed to happen, right? Like you're not supposed to come here and like like you know love these people or care about these people you know like wipe that paint off your face you know stuff like that right and eventually nathaniel he says no right like he's telling he's like talking back to kang like telling kang like you're just a guy who's you're just a drunk who's like you know trying to show me all your failures and your defeats and what kang says is yes so you won't repeat those right you won't fail the way that i did you won't uh, lose the way that i did right so when uh, nathaniel says that he wants to like save these people like if if time means nothing to kang why can't we save these people right like these are the first things that i've ever you know loved and cared about right and what kang does is he gets pissed right he like smacks nathaniel <laughs> he smacks nathaniel right and what nathaniel says is i'll save them and what kang says is no you did not and he like takes his gun and he takes nathaniel and nathaniel watches kang as he goes down there and slaughters this entire village literally just slaughters every single one of them right from there nathaniel he gets this plan right what he's gonna do is he's gonna wait until the very last night before the asteroid hits to take uh, Kang's suit and basically get out of there, right? He's gonna go into the time stream and he's gonna land somewhere, right? So when the asteroid's like showing up, he takes the suit and he goes, right? Like he just gets up out of there and Kang dies. So, uh, like he goes through the time portal and basically he lands in Ramatut's empire, right? Like in Egypt, right? And Ramatut's forces are already out there, right? Like they are, they were on him as soon as he landed, right? That happening, like they're they're all just like attacking him, right? They're just trying to take this guy out, right? Because they don't know who he is, they don't know where he came from. They're just on him, right? And eventually, like when they're like actually starting to overcome him, a Moon Knight shows up, right? So Moon Knight, uh, there was just Mark Spector, but like as the stories had went on, there had become more and more and more. And basically, the Moon Knight of this time, right here is a woman right so when she shows up she's like saying like you are called by the moon you know stuff like that like basically making him out to be like the prophet you know, you know stuff like that so eventually they end up like escaping for a time and they uh they end up going she takes him to the the temple of of Khonshu, right and she so shows him the statue of Khonshu, and like he starts like starts praying right and basically what happens is he turns into iron lad right like he gets like his iron and basically he what he says is in the shadow of a dead god i took my revenge and i cast it in iron so he goes out and he basically like he starts taking out all these different forces right him uh the moon knight they're basically just like trying to escape right they're just trying to get out of there with their lives right so eventually they end up like escaping right and uh what what we find out is this is ravana right like this is ravana renslayer this is the the woman that he's that he heard his uh master like kane talking about right so when they're like sharing a moment right they're just like sharing an intimate moment and basically like when they like when they're kissing and stuff like that uh like there's this ship that shows up right like in egypt there's this huge ship with all, all this high-tech stuff right and what we find out is this is rama touch ship right like he basically came and he just captured this guy right he captured uh nathaniel 
in uh, Ravana, and basically they're they're being held there, right? There's in R Ramatut, he's just trying to figure out like some stuff, right? He's just trying to get answers. So when Ravana like like starts trying to attack him, you know, stuff like that, he uses his Ultra Diode Ray, which basically like takes over the will of of whoever uh, whoever he shoots with it, right? Basically enslaves people. Um, Nathaniel gets mad, right? Like he dons the Iron the Iron Lad suit again, and basically uh, when he's like telling Nathaniel like he could kill him, you know, stuff like that. What uh, Nathaniel says is, uh, "You probably don't want to do that, right? I'm you from the past, so if you kill me, even if this might be a divergent timeline, you don't know what'll happen, right? Like you have no clue what's gonna happen, right? Throat you slit may be your own." So. What uh what Ramatut does is he's like okay I mean that's that's probably a good point you know like killing you might be a bad idea but using you eh, that's, that's a pretty good idea right there right so he uses his ultra diode rate and he like shoots him and basically enslaves him right and he, what he calls him is the the Scarlet Sim and what he calls him is the Scarlet Centurion right this is basically like the the time that he was the Scarlet Centurion for for Ramatut right. So, what we find out is Ramatut was in the middle of a war this whole time, right? Like, he's basically getting set upon by some unknown figure out there. And basically, he's going to have Scarlet Centurion, Nathaniel, go out there and fight this one, right? Be on the front lines to attack whoever this is basically trying to invade him. And what we find out is the person attacking Ramatut is Apocalypse, right? He's basically coming to try to take over Egypt at this point, right? So... Uh, fighting against Apocalypse, there's literally no hope for, for Nathaniel here, right? Like, Apocalypse is a little bit too powerful. There, there's literally nothing that he can do at this point to, to take this guy out, right? So, uh, at the end of the battle, like, after all this stuff has been done, like, like after, you know, all of Apocalypse's forces have taken out Ramatuts, uh, Nathaniel, it's just Nathaniel, right? Like, he's just walking around, and basically what he's saying is, he will have revenge on Kane. Like, he just keeps saying that, right? Like, he is literally set on getting revenge on Kane the Conqueror, right? And what he realizes is, this is the point where Rama Tut is getting set on by the Fantastic Four, right? Where they basically send him back into the time stream or had him retreat into the time stream from Egypt. Uh, this is happening right now, right? So, so Rama Tut, he's gone. He's out of there, right? And what Nathaniel realizes is there's someone that he can have actually help him with this, right? Like he's, he can go to someone and basically ask for their help for him to take out Kane the Conqueror, right? So... He goes to this temple, right? And what he says is, I come to you humble, the enemy of your escaped enemy. With your power and my wisdom, I believe we both can be satisfied, right? And Apocalypse, he's just sitting there, right? And what Nathaniel says is, together, we can destroy Cain. I could be his Apocalypse. Now, we're going to end this video here. If you enjoyed the story, leave a like. If you are new here, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.